Most people see blind spots as something we should do only before changing lanes. We need to check them also when turning. When turning right, people often have the reaction, why do I need to check the blind spot? There will be no car to my right, the sidewalk is there. Yes, but there could be cyclists, pedestrians or any kind of smaller road users. Or the car parked near the intersection could be about to leave. Even when turning left, especially if there's a vehicle parked next to the intersection that could be hiding someone. And it's very important at the exam too. And when parking, check it before reversing to the side where the vehicle's nose will be pointing. Do it also in situations where people usually don't see the point in checking them, like in parking lots for example. Here, after exiting the drive through I'm going to the right so I check it to my right. Here when exiting this gas station also, that car over there could be about to leave at the same time as me. Now some students check the blind spot to both sides before doing a maneuver. You don't need to check it to the side you're not going. If there's someone in your blind spot to the left here and you're changing lanes to the right, your paths won't cross so you don't need to check to the left. That's an extra unnecessary maneuver that only slows down the process. Now let's talk about what I call the assistance, some things people do or use in order to not have to turn the head to see what's in the blind spots and why they don't always work. Adjusting the side mirrors as wide as possible outwards. Here's the problem with this. In this example, I have my mirror adjusted so that I can still see a bit of my car and I also see a bit of this car in my mirror. But I can't see it in my central mirror. Now if I adjust my side mirror as wide as possible, I don't see the car anymore. Now I filmed this in the parking lot, but imagine we're driving and we're at the same relative distances. Now I hear you saying, yes, but that car is far enough, so if I change lanes I won't hit it. Yes, but that's only if you're both going more or less at the same speed. If the car decides to accelerate right after you finish doing your verifications, by the time you make your move, it could be right next to you. So the only way you'd see it would be to check your blind spot right before changing lanes. This is especially true to the left side because that portion of the central mirror is blocked by my head and the headrest. By adjusting your side mirror as wide as possible, you're not eliminating the blind spot. You're just displacing it. Because now, your mirror covers more of what you didn't see before, but you've created a new blind spot closer to your vehicle. Second, by adjusting your mirrors that way, you won't see a bit of your vehicle anymore. The reason I recommend students adjust them so that they can still see a bit of the vehicle is so that they have a reference point to judge their distance from the other vehicles, which helps a lot to spatially locate yourself like when changing lanes for example, but especially when parking between obstacles, like 90 degree parking for example, where it makes it a lot easier to judge your position relative to the vehicles on the sides. Leaning forward while looking in your mirror. It does work in some situations, but only if the other vehicle is already in your blind spot. And it works well to the left, not as well to the right because the mirror is further away from you. Some vehicles have blind spot monitors on the side mirrors that light up whenever someone is in the blind spot or approaching it. Now this might depend on the vehicle, but these ones don't light up when moving next to stopped obstacles for some reason, as you can see here. And blind spots are also for non-moving obstacles. They won't detect smaller vehicles like motorcycles, bicycles or any other small road users. Also if the sensors, which are located on the sides of the rear bumper, are covered with dirt, snow or anything else, they won't work and so on. And lastly, those rounded blind spot mirrors that you stick on your side mirrors. Do they actually help? Yes they do. That's the reason why you see them on most large vehicles like buses, trucks, vans and so on. For example, remember this pickup that I couldn't see in my mirror in my previous video? I'm exactly in the same position and I can now see it with this blind spot mirror. This is the one assistant that is the closest to turning your head to check the blind spot. If you want to install some on your vehicle, I recommend the adjustable ones so you can angle them to better fit your needs. If you have trouble turning your head for some reason, because of neck pain for example, I strongly recommend you install some of these. That way you'll be able to see what's in your blind spot relatively well and you can still see what's closer to your vehicle in the regular mirror. Now these assistants work well in some situations, but the reason I call them assistants is because that's what they are. They're there to assist you, not replace you. But here are a few other situations where they won't help at all, except maybe for the blind spot mirrors. If you stop right at an intersection and you're about to exit at the same time someone is turning from a perpendicular street towards you, you won't see them in your side mirror. 
So as soon as you go after having done your verifications, they could be on you. Same thing in any situation where someone is coming towards you from a perpendicular axis, like if you're exiting a parking spot next to a back street and there's someone exiting the back street coming towards you, next to a driveway where someone is exiting the driveway at the same time as you're exiting your parking spot, a parking lot, and so on. Here, I'm parked on a one-way street. Even if I adjust my side mirror as wide as possible, I don't see this red vehicle in it. So if that vehicle is about to exit his parking spot at the same time as I'm exiting mine, I won't see it. And by the way, here's a reason why you should always check your blind spots when turning. These kids are riding their bikes the wrong way on a one-way street, so they can be anywhere. Here, same situation as the previous one, but when driving at normal speed. I'm on the right lane and I want to change to the middle, and this vehicle in the left lane also wants to change to the middle. I won't see it in my central mirror since it's too close to me. I won't see it in my left mirror either, even if it's adjusted as wide as possible, because it's too far to the left. The only sure way I can see it is by turning my head to check the blind spot. I can see if it's flashing, the position of the vehicle itself in the lane, if it already started changing lanes, and so on. Then I can take a decision based on all those factors. And these are only a few examples. So basically, the only way you're going to cover all the space to the side of the vehicle is by checking the central mirror, which covers the back, then the side mirror, which covers what's further away on the side, and then the blind spot by turning your head, which covers what's closest to you. You have to get rid of the belief that checking the blind spots is only for changing lanes and to see something that's already in your blind spot. It's also to see if something could be there by the time you're about to make your move. And only by turning your head can you do that. Your mirrors are not enough in some situations no matter how wide they're adjusted. So I strongly recommend getting into the habit of checking the blind spots properly by turning your head and in some places at the exam, it's automatic failure if you don't do it. In the next video, I'll discuss something you've been asking me for a while. Why do I turn the wheel only one turn in a type of parking, one and a quarter in another, all the way in another, and so on. So stay tuned and see you soon.